Okay, hello everyone. I got cut off by my laptop, which agitates me to no end, but we're going to just continue on. So as I was saying, the book Bold Love poses this question regarding those who have sinned against you, okay? Would you rather that person genuinely repent, like truly genuinely repent, make amends with you, reconcile with you, rebuild trust with you, you know, do a 180, turn around, make a U-turn. Would you rather that, or would you rather them receive the punishment that they deserve, which may mean them going to the lake of fire? That is the heart level question to be asked. And hopefully, the answer that you come up with the answer that you find in your heart is that you would rather them genuinely repent. You would rather them genuinely be in right standing with God and in right standing with you. And that's a matter of the desire of the heart. And if, you're tr if you are in right standing with God, then your desire regarding that person will be aligned with his. And we know what his desire is because it says that he wishes that none shall perish. So that's the question. You have to dig deep down beneath your self-protection, which really is a matter of not trusting God, okay? And realize that deep down, you would rather see this person repent. You would rather reconcile with this person. You would rather them truly, genuinely repent and that there be peace, that there be love and reconciliation and trust, okay? Let me read this to you again. Your expectations are high. Soon your perception will change. The new normal is not what you can manage without my strength. Again, apart from him, we can do nothing. No one is making a priority of finding friends. You're going to need true friendship. People are isolating. This is against my will. Forsaking is not appropriate unless you've been abused. The new laws will prevent gatherings. Fellowship is necessary. Stop holding grudges. Repent, apologize, reconcile. What Holy Spirit is reminding me of right now is I did a video a few years ago on the topic of the five languages of apology. Okay, just like there's the five love languages to correlate with that, there's the five languages of, of, of apology. Okay, um, off the top of my head, you know, some people really need to hear the words, I'm sorry. Some people need to hear the promise that, okay, I won't do it again, or I'm going to do my darndest not to do it again, or, you know, something along those lines. Okay. Um, so I will put that link to that video in the description box below and or the comments below because uh, YouTube lately is giving me a hard time with putting links, live links in the description box, depending. Um, the Lord has been prompting that, you know, there's, there, there's just certain themes that he just keeps harping on because it's so important and fellowship is one of them, okay? We know from scripture that we are body, soul, and spirit, okay? Our body needs certain things. You know, we have to eat and drink certain things to get nutrients for the health of our body. We need to be in right standing with God, of course. But, you know, that's the body level and the spirit level. But on a soul level, the Lord tells us in his word, we need, how he created us, how we are hardwired is we need fellowship. We need friendship. We need companionship. Okay? God himself is a triune being. Okay? Okay? He said to Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. That's why he created Eve, okay? And, I, and I, I'm not here to harp on uh, kingdom marriage and all that right now. But, I mean, that that is, you know, marriage is the, the, the foundation of marriage, of course, is uh, friendship and companionship, okay? Um, but we need fellowship. And, you know, it, there's just, it, it says in God's word, you know, that we are to love one another, submit to one another, be kind to one another, exhort one another, um, even correct and rebuke one another. That's necessary at times. Um, you know, we are to encourage each other and build each other's faith up and lift each other up, you know, with encouragement and testimonies. You know, we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Okay. People are not fellowshipping these days. 
or they think they have found their click and they stick to that and you you can't grow that way. You need people that are going to challenge you, okay? And I, I, and God has shown me that what people are doing is they're they're either isolating so that they're completely alone on purpose or they're sticking to people that don't challenge them. People that don't challenge them, don't question them, don't ever rebuke them or correct them because they don't want to deal with their junk. They don't want to repent. They don't want to examine themselves. They they want to stay comfy cozy in their sin. Appreciate when God sends you a true friend who's going to sit you down to deal with your junk. Appreciate that because it's going to help you grow. It's going to help you get promoted in the kingdom and go from glory to glory. It's going to help make sure that you're in right standing with God regarding your salvation. <sighs> what else, Lord? Anything else you want me to say? Yes. Let's read this again. This is what Yeshua said. Your expectations are high. You want me to say anything on that, Lord? Okay. Soon your perception will change. The new normal is not what you can manage without my strength. He wants me to say something on that. What do you want me to say, Lord? The new normal is not what you can manage without my my strength, says the Lord, says Yeshua. His strength. His strength is made perfect in our moment of weakness because that's when we turn to him. And if you have not been submitting to his convictions and his promptings, don't be surprised if you're about to go through some fires because we're... <laughs> We're in the sorrows right now, and we are no longer at the beginning or even the middle of the sorrows. We're now heading into, like, the end of the sorrows, okay? In terms of the last seven years, the sorrows are the, fir are the first three and a half years. Judgment, punishment is coming, and God will allow and or orchestrate things to bring you to your knees so that you learn to depend on him. And if you have been resisting that and refusing it, I can guarantee you that that's going to happen. Okay? For years, I resisted God. I refused. I resisted. Um, it was like a standoff between God and I. How I used to describe it was like playing like chess, even though I, I, I don't know how to play chess. <laughs> but but it was like, you know, I, that's how it felt to me. It felt like this um, this just like standoff of like, you know, God and I both having like our arms crossed and he actually sent someone to me years back and said that they had a vision and they said, well, what I saw was you got your arms crossed, but he's got his arms wide open waiting for you. And I didn't really believe it. I didn't, uh, you know, my heart wasn't sensitive to that at that time, but now it almost brings me to tears. And I, I can't even tell you, I mean, I have told you, actually, I have shared it on here a while back, but um, back in 2017, the Lord allowed and or orchestrated for me to be put through the ringer. I learned very quickly to be dependent on him. You know, I, I grew very close to him back in 2017 when I was going through, it was just like one thing after another for like a, like more than a year straight. And then just recently, you know, over just the last few years here, like I have not just learned to like seek him and, and you know, give him more of my attention and my time and, um, it, you know, just my worship, my submission. But I have really learned the last few years being homeless for over being predominantly homeless for more than two and a half years now, I have really learned to trust God. I have really learned like deeper than ever to depend on him and to trust him that I can depend on him. That he is who he says he is. He is trustworthy and he will make a way. And all that's required of us is to get ourselves right with him. As it says in his word, if we keep his commands, if we keep his precepts, if we submit, if we do things his way, instead of our way, instead of what way makes sense to us.
The new normal is not what you can manage without my strength. He told us, apart from me, you can do nothing. He told us flat out. He's not a man that he should lie. He was the second Adam. He had no sin. He was God in the flesh. No one is making a priority of finding friends. You're going to need true friendship. People are isolating. This is against my will, says the Lord. Stop isolating. Repent of isolating. And if you really examine why you're isolating yourself, it's a mixture. It's fear. It's pride. It's distrust towards God. And, you know, pride could be that, okay, maybe, maybe you've got some uh, sin going on and people don't like it. And you've been refusing to, to deal with it. You've been refusing to repent. And so maybe that's part of why you're isolated. Maybe, you know, maybe people are kind of fed up with certain things that you have refused to repent of. That There's the pride issue aspect of it. Then there's fear. Okay, P maybe people have hurt you. You're isolating yourself to protect yourself, which means you're not trusting God. You're not trusting what his word says, and you're not trusting him to lead you. You're not trusting him to give you discernment to lead you to know, okay, I can trust this person, I can't trust this person, this person's safe, this person isn't, and so forth. People are isolating. This is against my will, says the Lord. Forsaking is not appropriate unless you've been abused. Every, you know, these days, everybody is so quick to just end a relationship doesn't matter what type of relationship it is. I remember a couple years ago, there was someone who came into my life. And this person, more than once, ended our friendship abruptly. Just boom, out of nowhere. Because we were having a little friction. I just got a text message. Okay, well, I'm done. You know, and, like, and, and that was it. That, that, that is not how we're supposed to act as a Christian. That is not how we're supposed to treat each other. That is not brotherly love. That is not humility. Everyone's so quick to just end relationships, block people on their phone, block people on the internet, whatever. People are so quick to, you know, jump to conclusions, make negative assumptions instead of being vulnerable, instead of saying, hey, why don't we have a phone call or a video call or even better yet, meet up in person if we can? Why don't we, you know, make um, some, some effort here to find out what's really going on here? And remember that you have an enemy. Remember that Satan is always trying to divide people. Sit down and, and, and make I feel statements. I feel hurt right now because such and such and such. I feel sad right now because such and such and such. I feel aggravated. I feel frustrated. Pick an emotion. Okay, you can go on the internet and just type in emotion wheel. This is stuff that I went over on the channel a few years ago. Okay, type in emotion wheel and figure out what emotion you're feeling. Okay, get better at identifying your own emotion. And then sit down with the person and say, okay, I feel such and such. There's a teaching that I did a while back on a method called the uh, the timeout. Maybe I'll link that below as well, okay? A timeout. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with a romantic partner, a friend, a family member, okay? Now, granted, you have to discuss this with them before you get into a fight so that both people will abide by this. But, you know, okay, you, you start triggering each other. And then one person says, okay, I need a timeout. Not you need a timeout, but I need a timeout. This way you're not escalating things, okay? I need a timeout, and you take one hour. You take one hour, and then you come back to, into communication, and you take that hour to cool down. You take that hour to pray as a Christian, right? To, to invite Yeshua in to speak to you about what's going on. Is it something on your end? Is it something on their end? Is it something on both ends? Do both of you need to repent? Does somebody need to apologize? Does somebody need to humble themselves? Okay. Is somebody maybe just misunderstanding, miscomprehending the other person and what they meant? Maybe you need to be a little bit more open-hearted and hear them out. 
give them a give them a, a better opportunity to maybe explain themselves better. Maybe they need to work on communicating better what they mean. Okay, you you come back to each other in an hour, and you say I feel statements. Well, I feel such and such. I feel sad. I feel frustrated. I feel you know angry. I feel threatened. I feel disrespected, whatever the case may be. And you, you talk about it, you be vulnerable and you try to figure it out and work together. Forsaking is not appropriate unless you've been abused. Now, yes, technically, again, abuse is, 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 is a, a spectrum. And we have to make boundaries with people, healthy boundaries that you're not going to tolerate being lied to. You're not going to tolerate, you know, what, whatever. And then you have to stand by that. But, you know, you also have to be, a, as a Christian, you have to be willing to talk, figure it out, try to work it out. The new laws will prevent gatherings. The Lord recently had me post a message on here not too long ago saying that your time for fellowship is almost up. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about how, you know, lock to the down is coming and it's going to be worse than 2020. It's going to be more strict. It's going to be more difficult to fellowship with people in person. The new laws will prevent gatherings. Fellowship is necessary, period. This is what Yeshua is saying. Fellowship is necessary necessary as it says in his word stop holding grudges stop with the self-protection the only protector you need is father god yahweh he is your defender he is your defender he is your avenger stop holding grudges all that is is a way to try to protect yourself and it's toxic and it prevents God's will because quite often God wants you to reconcile with that person. God wants you to work it out somehow, some way. Repent, apologize, reconcile is what Yeshua says. Anything else you want me to say, Lord? Okay, I think that's it. I'm sorry that this had to be broken up into a part one and part two. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm going to have to start really... Making sure I've got memory space on my laptop. Um, so please take this to heart. Take this back to Yeshua and discuss it with him. And ask yourself, are you really living by what the word of God says? The word of God says to repent, to apologize, to reconcile, to submit to one another, to love one another with brotherly love, to treat each other with, with kindness. The fruit of the spirit is long-suffering, patience, right? The word of God says to forgive and to make an effort to reconcile. Are you doing that? Many of you are not. So much so that the Lord is giving me a rhema word to post on a worldwide platform. This is a major problem in the body of Christ, especially right now. When now more than ever, we need support systems. As he said here, we need true friendship. And people are preventing that necessary soul level requirement for well-being. Thank you, Lord, for the words. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.